All right, cool. Oh, hi, Andrew. How are you? Okay, so we've got about like I think four people now. Um, so sorry. So let let's let's start from the top. Um, so what's gonna happen is that um, I'm gonna. So what's gonna happen is that uh, Pat is gonna share her experience about training, why she started training, and the process of of how she went through from being osteoporotic to training to being out of the osteoporotic range. And at the end of that, we will have a short question and answer session. So throughout the, the talk or the interview, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the feel leave them in the comments and then we will answer them at the end of it. So uh, Pat, you started training about just over three years ago in April 2017. Um, can you can you sort of uh, let us to tell us what, what was the series of events that led you to that? Yes, actually, it was a, an error in what I had said before, now that I'm going back to think about it. Um, it's not been um, 10 years, it's been 20 years of measuring bone density. So I'm glad we have a chance to start over. Right. So roughly um, 20 years ago, um, I had my fo first um, bone density test and it showed osteopenia. So I was recommended to do exercise, some kind of um, physical exercise uh, daily, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week. Um, could be weights, could be walking. It was just kind of be active. So I did that and I took a prescription medication for about six years. There was an initial increase, improvement in my bone density but then um, the bone density measurements continued to decline, um, even though I had continued to take medication and I was still continuing to exercise. And then in um, 2017, when I was uh, getting a bone density test, my spine bone density was now in the osteoporosis range. And my general practitioner, who's in the Marine Parade area, not so far from Hygieia Gym, said that I have to do something about this. Um, I have to either take medication or do some kind of specific um, resistance training or something to um, improve the um, bone density. And I said, well, I'm already going to a gym and using machines. And he said, uh, he, if I wanted to, to do um, resistance training rather than take a new medication that I should try this more specific um, resistance training. He didn't say barbells. He just said that would be more specific. And he gave me Sean's um, hand phone number and I WhatsApped Sean. And if anybody else has ever WhatsApp Sean, you know, Sean answers pretty fast. And um, he told me where the gym was and I bicycled there, I think, on my first day. I couldn't find the gym in the rain. And Sean came out with his umbrella and stood there waiting for me. And anyway, I, I made it to the gym. Um, there was no machines in the gym. There were no machines. I was not expecting barbells. But I said, well, okay, well, you know, we'll see what this is. Sean introduced me to the um, squat. And I was thinking, well, this is just not going to work because I, my knees aren't good and I'm not going to be able to do this. But he was very patient and just suggested trying it. And um, with his instruction and coaching about how I should perform it, it didn't hurt my knees. And so I, um, I did some squats. Maybe we did overhead presses next. And I, again, said this will also not work because I have shoulder pain. <laughs> and um, we worked through with a very light bar and I was able to successfully perform some overhead presses. And then I think the most awkward thing for me was like this um, deadlift was like such a foreign position and uh, just everything about it felt very strange and foreign. Anyway. We did some um, deads, and that might have been about the, um, maybe we did, I can't remember if we did any bench or not, but anyway, that, that was the first session. Yep. And I was thinking, 
Well, I don't know. It's only a few movements and uh, two of them I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do anyway. <laughs> so I don't know if this is going to work for me or not. But it was interesting that Sean said, I only need to come twice a week. And I thought, well, that sounds good. <laughs> that fits my schedule well. And I stuck with it. The dead continue, continued to feel awkward for, I'm sure, months. But um, even after like four or six weeks, I could already feel some changes that seemed positive. And, um, and I decided, uh, I decided, uh, look, all uh, in my mind, everybody else at the gym is much younger and much stronger. Um, I will just be consistent. I will just come and I will do my things and I will be consistent and we'll see, we'll see what happens. And so that's how I got started. Right. So uh, you, you decided to come in to do something different because that was the first year that you were osteoporotic. So before that you were yep. all osteopenic and that was, it was like the thing that, yep. that pushed you over to, to decide to want to redo something about it. Yep. I had just given up. I had just thought, um, you know, this, this bone um, density decline just comes as one gets older and there's, you know, I just have to live with it. That's, that's where I was. Um, but my doctor was not, not, not resigned to it at all. And he was like, you have to do something. He was like, you are too young. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> so um, right. that was, that was that is, fun. That is good. That is good. So be, before that, before you started doing this, you, you were already active, um, but found that it didn't really, did it help? Did it do any? So if maybe if it asking, slowed, but my bone mineral density um, measurements were just going down, down, down. Even, you know, even though I was like every, every other day doing the machines in the gym and, I, and on the opposite days doing, you know, an hour walking. Right. Um, so if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I, when I was still doing house calls, I remember seeing you in the gym when I was coaching someone else that you were inside on the machines doing the leg extensions and the yes. and it, I, I, I vaguely remember it, it's you. So that's, that's uh, how coincidental. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't, our, if you remember, our gym uh, equipment was not the best. So just on the things that was, was working, Yep. that's what i did yeah yeah yep. okay okay so you, when, when you first started training what were you expecting what 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 was what was in your mind when you when you first walked in what what were you expecting to do i thought there was going to be machines and i thought maybe i would do like eight or ten different things or something and right, right. i wasn't thinking it's just like three lifts i certainly wasn't thinking that and I also wasn't picturing myself um, as a barbell lifter. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I think I just, I just didn't even think that that's like what I would ever be doing. So I, I think I wasn't, um, right. it was, it was very much new territory <laughs> for me. Okay. Okay. So you had some concerns um, with the squat and the pressing that your knees and your shoulders was not uh, was not the best. What 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 issues were you having with your with your knees and your shoulders? Years years ago, I had gone to a, a commercial gym and we were rotating around on the different equipment. And there was a overhead press machine, and I'd like to do overhead press um, on this machine, but however I was doing and I was getting shoulder pain and the um, trainer or the coach or the person there just said, Oh, well, with your shoulders, you can't do it. You know, you should not do that. It's, it's not safe for you to do that. It's not good for you to do that. So I just assumed that's, that's, that's how um, it's going to be. Nothing, nothing right. I can do. So you know, years ago I stopped doing them because it um, had pain, um, uh, had pain in my shoulders, my mm -hmm. um, knees, uh, when I did long distance um, walking, trekking, or running, um, my knees would uh, hurt a lot, and sometimes my foot would hurt. So I had done different things to try to figure out how can I keep 
walking, wear knee supports and things to um, minimize the pain. But I thought something like the squat would put, I was thinking too much stress on my knees, you mm -hmm. know, that this would be safe um, for my knees. I think another, another big thing early, no longer, but early was, could this possibly be safe for me to be doing these, these right. Uh, right. exercises? So, or these, these movements, could they possibly be safe? Okay. And uh, so that, that, that between reading, uh, watching other lifters, more reading, <laughs> listening to Sean, of course, but um, it, it took a while to kind of mentally get comfortable with um, that this is safe for me. Right. to understand right. how that this is, would be safe for me. Okay. So as, as the, the month came along, you felt a difference in your body. Uh, what, what differences were there that you could actually feel? Oh, like a, um, a lot um, stronger through like the upper legs. There was a whole thing happening in my back, I, I didn't even understand um, what was going on at the beginning, but it was the muscles of my back that were um, getting stronger. And it was just such an entirely um, new sensation. I wasn't sure if it was um, correct or safe or what was going on. But, you know, after training, I would really feel this new, not pain, but just this sensation in my back. And I was like, what is that? And it's just the muscles after training, you know, that's, it, they were fine. <laughs> they, they were just getting stronger and they probably all those years, there was probably very little that I had done that specifically, you know, um, uh, exercised them or used, used them in a, in a, to get stronger. So, um, and, and I tell you at the beginning of training, I didn't even know I had lats, you know, so that was like, Oh, you know, <laughs> just like, wow, I have lats now, you know, so it's just all these, um, all these changes as, um, um, muscles developed. So that was, that was, um, I think encouraging. And I think the other, um, thing I never, I didn't feel like I was particularly unsteady on my feet, but um, after training for a while, I just noticed that I was, you know, just um, not having trouble with balance at all. You know, I was able to, if something jostled me or something, you know, something uneven, I was able to handle that, I thought, you know, um, well, so it, 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 I just felt, um, I felt stronger and, um, just better, better able to, um, respond to things. I have to carry my bicycle over some pedestrian bridges and I think that's gotten easier in this big, awkward, heavy, um, weight, you know, and, um, um, I'm now um, at, in my office, um, those big blue water bottles that you put on the dispenser. Um, now I get to, um, to put those water bottles out because um, people are like, okay, okay, she's strong enough. She can do this. You know? But be before it was like, no, 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 we, you know, she's definitely too old. She cannot, cannot do this. Thing, so. Yeah. So the, with regards to the back muscles thing, I, I get it once in a while when clients after a couple of months start training. And then they said, no, I, I can feel this, this thing on my back. Is, is, is that okay? Am I <laughs> wrong? I said, no, that's, 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 that's your muscle. That's your spine erector. That's perfectly normal. And they're like, oh, that's cool. I, I never realized that I had that. You know? yep. So, yeah, that's, that, 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 that yep. concerns with your, with your experience. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Because initially I'm thinking something's wrong. I never felt this before, you know. <laughs> so. Yep, yep. So do you, do you remember what you did on the first day? When you came in, how much do you squat and oh. press and deadlift it? Do oh, uh, no, I just remember that for a long time, I had to use the, um, like the five kg barbell and the whichever one. So, um, so I know I was in the, <laughs> in the, 
in the beginning ranges somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So I was just looking through uh, the old photos of yourself training. The first day, I, mm. you did 17 and a half. And uh, on the deadlift, on the deadlift, you were like 20, 25 or 30. So if, if come, a, come a long way now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So when, when you first started training, you were in the osteoporotic range. And then after a year of training, you did the bone scan again. Right. How, how did that go? So my, my uh, thing was, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to work at this. I'm going to see after one year, is, is this working? Or do I have to you know, try something else? Where are we? And um, I went back and got a bone scan. And I'm just going to read the results from it. So the, the spine, the lumbar vertebrae, was the um, area that had been identified as osteoporotic before. And the rate of change in the bone BMD, the bone mineral density of the lumbar spine, is plus 0.7.5% as compared to 2017. So this was the 2018 result was that the spine was plus 7.5%. That, that was the biggest improvement in my spine in 20 years of effort. You know, so nothing, most of the results had just always been decline, 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 decline. Early on, there was a little bit of improvement, but nothing like an improvement like this. So that was um, just um, very exciting for me. And um, we're in uh, circuit breaker period now, but I'm hoping once this ends to go back and um, get another bone density. It'll be after two more years of training. So we'll see. Um, what it shows then, but I'm I'm kind of optimistic about um, yeah. what what I'll see. Yeah. yeah uh, um, and I think. <clears throat> sorry, Kara. Uh, okay, I I think one of the things that's been um, very positive for me is that my general practitioner had recommended doing barbell training, and um, my dentist also is um, very much um, that this type of training will improve um, bone density. So it's very nice that there's like medical authorities that reinforce this path. I, I, one of the things when I started training is I just looked for other masters, women, lifters. And there's not so many, but um, I've, I've reached out to a few and I've asked them, are they doing bone densities? And I'm just trying to um, get more information on, on what happens. Um, so it's, it's some of one, at least one person has told me that her general practitioner is very much discouraging her to do this, saying that it's not safe for her spine. Mm -hmm. And so I feel really lucky that, um, the, um, community of people that I'm part of and the medical, um, people uh, that I see, um, you know, are encouraging in this direction. And, and now after reading and doing this and everything. I also feel like um, this is really uh, working for me. Okay. So, so you you went into your second bone scan not really expecting anything or did you think that, you know, you definitely go out while you, you, you're still on the fence about this? I, I hoped, but I, I just didn't know, like, um, you know, like actually today I was um, um, reading something from an insurance company and the insurance company was saying osteopenia uh, is a precursor to osteoporosis and osteopenia is a degenerative disease. And, and it just, it, it just painted it as if it's a one way picture that, you know, once you have osteopenia, it um, gradually your bone density continues to decrease and you'll end up with osteoporosis. So, um, I uh, I didn't know how um, how much to count on being able to improve bone density um, by doing this. So so I you know I felt my muscles certainly I felt stronger, but I just didn't know how much that translates to my bones. I, I didn't know how much I could hope for. Anyway, it, it certainly exceeded my expectations. <laughs> so I'm that was I'm glad. more than I expected. That is good. So. But one thing I want to I want to raise up was so earlier you said that the insurance company said if if 
osteoporosis or osteopenia is a de degenerative disease. Yes, so, condition, yeah, uh, disease, yeah. Yes, I want to point out that osteoporosis is not a disease. It's part of the aging process. A disease is something that has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you, you don't say that you have, you know, if, if you start losing muscle mass as a function of getting older, you don't say you have, you know, muscle wasting disease. Your muscles just atrophy as you get older. So the, the, the verbiage that people use to, 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 to describe things like this has to be very careful because it gives people the mindset that there is something wrong. It's a disease. It, it's not a disease. So I, I hope that um, you can look at this at a different thing, right? So like gray hair. It's, it's right, a right. process. It's not, you know, graying hair disease. Disease. Exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. All right. Um, so after, after training for a while, you started competing in uh, lifting. So like strength lifting meets in the gym and uh, power yep. lifting meets outside. So t tell us a bit more about that. Well, um, I, I feel like I've been training maybe for like four weeks. It was probably a little bit longer, but you asked me very early about joining a competition. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not, not, not ready for this at all. But um, so I passed on the first opportunity, but then there was another opportunity that year um, to join a meet at Hygieia. And I knew there was another woman who was going to be at the meet. So that was a big help and I had met um, someone on I think another master's three lifter uh, in the US uh, and um, I was talking with her a little bit on email and she was so enthusiastic so supportive about the idea of about going to a meet and trying it and it's fun and just really enthusiastic so um, I agreed to do that, and after I agreed to do it, then Sean told me that we would be wearing singlets for the meet. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> but, like, uh, it's, like your, it's like your GP not telling you that it's barbell training. It just said this is right, right, same, right, right, right. Same, same, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit out of my comfort zone here, but uh, Jenny, the um, lifter that I had met in the states, um, she, she said, "My daughter's about your size. Let me tell you, you know, which which." Um, which singlet that she got. And anyway, uh, we got it ordered. It arrived in time. Um, I was, because I'm um, uh, not that big of a lifter and a beginning lifter, of course, I had to be the first lifter because I would be lifting the lightest, um, lightest amount. So I remember my first squat, um, somehow I did make depth and I got, um, three, uh, three whites, whatever for that. I missed my next two squats. I know because I'm sure that the depth um, wasn't there for them, but I think I hit all three of my deads and I was, um, I really um, got a high from that. It was really fun to be able to um, deadlift more than I had ever lifted in the gym. And I also hadn't thought in my training up till then, whatever my maximum dead was at the, that meet, I didn't realize that one could expect to be able to lift more at a meet that you would peak and you might be able to lift more at a meet than you'd ever lifted in training. So to do that was, I just felt it was, it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. So that, um, that first meet was good and meeting people. And the other thing I would say is that uh, is, um, you know, not the most uh, confident person about doing this, but the crowd of people at the gym were just really, really supportive and really um, nice and encouraging and um, just um, made me um, feel like I, I could be lifting there. And um, so it was, it was um, good to have that, their support for that. Okay. So I did a few more at the um at the gym um at hygieia and then one day in between um sets i think we were talking about martin who uh, lifted in the power lifting meets in singapore and about the records that were for his age and weight class 
and then I was like, well, what are, what are the numbers for M3 women? You know, uh, what are, what are the numbers for me? And so we got the squat number and it was a little high and the bench number and then the um, number for deadlift, the, the minimum requirement for um, M3 women in the 57 kg class was 75 kg. And I was like, 75? I, I, that's like one of my warm-ups. That's, you know, I can, I can do 75, you know, any day. And so then the idea was like, well, maybe, maybe I will go to the next powerlifting meet just to, just to register my, my uh, deadlift because whatever it was, you know, I can, I can easily do more than 75. And that was um, about, about one year ago um, in 2019. Um, yep, and, that was the uh, Marina Bay Sands one, yep. Yeah. That was a big experience for me that was, <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the good thing was I met two more Masters Women Lifters, so in Singapore, so that was, that was wonderful, and um, they, they were, you know, just like, we, we exchanged WhatsApp messages, you know, we're, um, it's just very good to know um, um, more more masters um, women lifters. Um, the it's, it was a little overwhelming. Um, uh, That's putting it lightly. After, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after I finished, I was like, I don't know if I would want to do any more. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, we decided. I guess a um, couple months later, there was one more powerlifting meet in the fall that's at a different type type of venue. It's not all the um, stimulation and music and groups and um, excitement that's at MBS. It's a it's a calmer thing. And I thought, okay, I'll just try that, and then um, you know then I'll decide that that'll be enough. If that one, if I don't care for that one, then I'm, I'm done with the powerlifting meets. I'll know it's not for me. And I also had headphones and I um, knew how I wanted part of, part of all this is like discovering what works for me and what works for me is like not a lot of stimulation in between doing the lifts. So um, <laughs> Marina Bay, Bay Sands had overstimulation as far as I was concerned. So I put my headphones on in between the lifts. Um, they um, they went well. Um, I uh, was able to uh, lift uh, a, a goal, a, a land um, landmark. I made a hundred kg deadlift, which was um, slow and grindy, but there was like such enthusiastic crowd support. I couldn't let it down and um, I kept pulling and um, it was successful. At the top, I remember I felt like, wow. And I don't know what came over me, but I started to let go on one side. <laughs> and so fortunately, um, it, I put the bar down and only one judge noticed that because I almost disqualified my lift. <laughs> but. Um, it was a successful um, lift in a in a real high to um, um, compete at that, and I met um, some of the same lifters that I had met earlier. So I'm getting to know a little community of lifters, and that's been really nice too. That's good. That's good. So out of everything, all the meets and everything that you've done so far, which one was the the most memorable lift? Well, I, I guess my mo my two most recent um, like deadlift PRs that um, it it was it was a thrill to um, pull a hundred with in, with this crowd um, cheering me on, and then in April last month um, here in Singapore, we decided to just it was um, the gyms were going to close because of the circuit breaker and schedules were tight and it was just like okay i'm coming in for training okay we're gonna um we're gonna try to see um 
it, you know, are there any PRs here? We'll, we'll do a little thing. So it was just me. It was me, me and the barbell, Sean, and <laughs> Marvin. And, you know, that was about, it was just a tiny little crowd. And it was just like load the bar with whatever Sean said. Okay, let's try this and, and do it. And um, the deadlifts just felt great. They just felt great. So I, I tried for 102.5. That went really nicely. 105 went really nicely. 110 also went, it was, it was hard, but it went okay. And I was still thinking, I'm still good. You know, I, uh, whatever we put on here, I'm good. It, it just felt really, really good. So that was, that was um, awesome to have that um, uh, experience of just feeling um, very confident in the dead and being able to, and to be able to do it. So, you know, sometimes in training, so early on, like when I was working up to like 90 kg, I remember being scared of the barbell and really unhappy about, about it. And just like, Oh, I don't know but about being able to do it. And so these kind of mental things that get in your head, but um, I had been training for several, three months or three and a half months leading up to April and just steadily training. And then, when it was time to do those things, it, everything just came together really nicely. And it, 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 it was, it was great. It was it, a great time. It was great indeed. <laughs> it was very nice to, to, to have experienced that together with you. So now, now that you're a lot stronger than you were before, apart from the day to day things that are much easier to perform, how do you think, it affects you, like your attitude, your mindset, your outlook on, on life. Has, has it changed since getting stronger? So I think um, some things, um, how at training, it's just like step by step. We don't rush things. We're very patient, but, you know, just little bit by little bit, just kind of keeping that in mind as, I approach some big issue and it's like, you know, holding my nerve, having confidence that um, I can um, get through this. Um, sometimes I have to face some unpleasant people and um, I, some, especially if I've gone to training in the morning and then I have to face them afterwards, I feel like, I'm ready. <laughs> you know, I've done the hardest thing already. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure I've done the hardest thing already. So whatever, whatever this um, encounter is going to be like, I can do it, you know, cause um, I'm sure my training is harder than whatever this encounter is. So, <laughs> some, some, um, some just like, I think ment mental strength and I hadn't thought how important um, mental attitude and mental strength is in training so um so i try i try each of my lifts i try to think about them and understand them and um figure out you know what 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 should i be doing to try to um do them be able to do them um, competently, correctly, um, with good form, and um, and and try to make each one its own little project coming along. So, like my squat moves very slowly, but I, I'm still trying to like be positive about about the squat and not not just like give up on this this lift. So, um, I think understanding that things are a slow process but that there is progress through that slow process you know staying with it um believing in it um that, that and i think um and i think being stronger um just gives me more confidence too so i think i think that's uh that comes with it okay cool so how how is your training now i mean not now because now you're training at home because of this whole situation 
Um, so before it, the, the gyms were closed, how was your training then different to when it was, say, you know, two and a half years ago? Well, um, so um, two, you know, at the start or two and a half years ago, I would be um, in linear progression. I stayed in linear progression. My, I guess another thing I would, I have to say that I'm thankful for is that the training with you, um, although it was challenging, I never felt like you were rushing me into something that I was not prepared for. So I think that was really important to me um, to feel that I wasn't over my head or wasn't going to be put into something that would be too risky or too unsafe for me. So I was in linear progression for a long time and I was just slowly moving along through that. Now, um, like I have a heavy day for um, heads and um, squats. And I'm, um, I remember I used to see the guys in the gym and they'd be like doing, I don't know how many sets, but lots and lots of sets of different things. Now I'm doing four sets of some of my lifts and um, uh, it's, it's more work. Um, the, the, um, the, uh, the weight, the, the gain in what I'm able to lift comes more slowly. Um, but I feel like I know my lists. I feel like I, I have the feel of them much, much more. So I feel like I, at the beginning when I used to do squats, it was like, um, diving, it was like jumping off of a high diving board with my eyes closed. You know, I just, I just went and I hoped that I could come back <laughs> to the top, but I, you know, I really didn't have a lot of idea about how it all went together. And now I, um, I have a much better sense of what's going on, where my knees should be, have I reached depth or not, are my hips coming up too fast? You know, so you know, I just have a much better sense of the um, technique. And um, uh, I guess, and I, the the other thing that I'm I'm doing now is. Uh, maybe there'll be like a, a meet uh, out so many months out. And so the training will be kind of organized in a block leading up to yep. leading up to that. So it might be three or four months um, uh, lead up to that. Um, the, another nice thing about training with you is that I um, come to the gym um, a little bit uh, still a little bit anxious about it's going to be, you know, they're going to be heavier. They're going to be challenging, but you know, they're always doable. So I, I do do the training and Sean takes care of all the numbers and figures out about, you know, how things need to be adjusted, wh what we should be doing next time. And I tell you, it's a great relief. I'm training at home now. I'm in charge of the numbers <laughs> and I need to think about like, was that too too hard? Was that too fast? How much weight should I go up? <laughs> you know, and it, am I making satisfactory progress or not? So it's it's a nice that um, um, Sean, with all his experience, can um, just understand a lot more about how to have um, a successful training, which I think is really important because sometimes when I'm just training on my own, I train myself into some kind of dead end, you know, something that's just not, not working well. And, and that does not happen um, when I'm training with Sean at Hygieo. All right. That's nice. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. So as, as you, as you one progresses in your training, uh, you, the progress will come slower and the amount of effort required to make progress will increase. Uh, and that's, that's just part of training, right? The longer you train, yeah longer you are the the more stress is required to drive progress and the progress will come at a much lower rate that's 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 part of the, the best part of how it is so when when your family and friends find out how much you know that you're weight training and how much you're lifting how, how do they normally react to that i'd say the um the 
my sisters-in-law are just like really supportive. And one of my brothers-in-law is just was, you know, just, it's like fantastic. Somebody at this age is able to compete and to like set a national record in Singapore. That's like, how cool is that? You know, they're just, they're really, um, really supportive. Nobody has signed up to do strength training or barbell lifting because I'm doing it. None of my extended family has like, wow, I think I'll do that too. But they all um, celebrate with me. And when I, um, you know, make some new milestone and um, they hear about it or um, Steve, my husband sends out a little message about it, you know, everybody's um, very encouraging and um, uh, keep going, you know, well, well done. So, so they're, they're positive. So your, your extended family is not, uh, not so much convinced, but your, your immediate family, you've managed to convince every single one of them to train, <laughs> which I think is awesome. So the first year, um, our son uh, was here in Singapore and oh, he was in his mid twenties and was trying to think about like what kind of Christmas present. And I thought, well, maybe give him a, chance to come to the gym, you know, and, and you just give this a try. And Alan came to the gym and he liked it. And um, so for a while, some months, Alan and I trained together. And um, it was kind of um, fun for me because I could out deadlift Alan for a, a little while. <laughs> yes. That was nice. That was pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I'll yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for a, a little while and then you know he blew past me but but at the beginning it was like I don't, and but he was um he was great it was just it was fun to um train with him and um it was totally unexpected that we would find barbell training as the um, mother and son thing to do and our daughter dana was here for a while and she came to some trainings and i also trained with her a little bit in the u.s and that, again, was just really fun to do together. Um, and uh, Steve, my husband, he'd been like watching this and then, you know, Alan and I would come home and sometimes we would talk about our lifts together. <laughs> and he, he was like, no, no, no. But after a year or two, maybe two, maybe a year and a half or so, he was like, he came to one of the competitions. Um, he did some pull-ups or chin-ups. Yep. And he he started um, training, and so um, now Steve and I um, train train at Hygia together. Is so, he training um, at home? He's doing push-ups. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I I have to explain to the um, listeners. Um, when the gym closed for the like the lockdown circuit breaker in Singapore, Sean lent out um, the barbells and plates to members. So I have a barbell and plates and some micro plates and chalk. And I s figured out how to make a kind of a squat rack and something that would work for bench presses. And... I modified my deadlift so that the bar doesn't slam the yeah the weight doesn't slam back down on the floor, and I'm doing all four lifts um, at home um, during the circuit breaker, which I'm hoping is only going to last a few more weeks. So Fingers crossed. I'm very much looking forward to coming back to the gym. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we we look forward to having everyone back as well. It's been what almost two months. Almost two yes, months. Yes. Now. Oof. Yeah, we're yeah. ready. We're ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So are we. So, with everything that you have achieved so far, what what are your goals looking forward? What do you hope to achieve in future, with regards to lifting? Um, well, I think I I think I would uh, like to continue lifting, definitely um, with a trainer or with a group, because. Um, I, 
realize here um, training on my own is um, uh, doesn't work for me. I, I wouldn't be happy doing this. And if, if this was the only thing I knew about um, barbell training, if somebody said, okay, here's these things you should do this, it's going to help you. And I would try it on my own. I would, I would not um, stay with it. It's just, it's not, doesn't work for me. So I, I want to um, continue to um, train at Hygieia as, as long as I'm in Singapore. And um, at some point we'll probably um, move back to the US, but I'd like to continue training again in some kind of um, group um, setting there. I have, um, uh, at the beginning when I was training, I was just grateful that I could um, do the lifts and I didn't want to um, jinx my progress by, by um, putting some number goal out there. And I wasn't even sure that it was realistic to have a, a goal. When Sean told me I was going to deadlift like one time my body weight, I just wasn't sure that um, someone my age and uh, with, with no experience and all that would ever really be able to do that. Certain people can do that, but not, you know, that, is that something I can do? And I, early on, I remember seeing uh, a video of a woman, maybe she was in her forties and she was deadlifting two times her body weight. And I thought, well, uh, you know, when you're 40, you can do that. You know, that, you know, that's something that, you know, you can do when you're 40, but you know, so, so I didn't, um, I didn't think it would be realistic to have um, number goals out there for what I'm uh, looking for. My goal this year had been to deadlift um, 110 kg. So uh, we got there already, and um, I would love to keep. <laughs> I'd love to keep working on my deadlift, and I want to. I want to bench 40. That's my um, my bench goal. And I think, you know, this year or next that that will come, that'll be slower, but um, that will come. And I think I'd like to, um, I'd like to go to a powerlifting meet if they, if they um, resume in Singapore, it would be um, fun while I'm here to um, set a few more records. Be the the, the um, situation for me is there are no, M3 women period in Singapore. So everything I do is, is the only competition is just is against myself. So um, it's like, uh, uh, you can't, it's not, the only stress is in my head against myself. So it's not like I have to um, um, be, you know, stronger than so many other M3 women there. There's just um, nobody there. And, and I think part of the, uh, my goal is to say, um, well, you can do this. We can do this. You know, people, people my age can um, lift. So I'd, I'd like to um, show what I can do and maybe meet, um, you know, meet more master's women or encourage more, um, more master's women to lift. Yep. If, if, if you are a master female lifter watching this right now, uh, you can uh, drop me a, 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 an email or leave a comment here. Um, and I'll, I'll be sure to pass that on to Pat because I'm, I'm very sure she'll like to connect with you. So please feel yes. to yes. contact us. <laughs> so to, to end off, what, what would you tell people that might be or are heading towards the predicament that you were before you started training? Well, um, I guess... Um, this is an effective way to help counter loss of bone density. It's not for everybody, um, but if you don't want to take medication and if you want to see if this type of training would, would appeal to you physically and mentally, um, you should definitely try it for like maybe four or six weeks, you know, just, just long enough to kind of get started to see, is it for you or not? I remember after the very, very first training, my muscles were so sore. So 
yeah. I wasn't sure, <laughs> like, whoa, you know, is, um, is this what it's going to be like? Um, and it turns out that the very, very first training, because you're using muscles in ways that you, you're not used to using, your muscles are letting you know about that. And it gets much, much um, easier as, as time goes on. So I would, I would definitely encourage trying it because it's got um, physical and mental benefits. And, um, and it's definitely um, outside, um, um, it was definitely outside my comfort zone. You know, it was not something that I imagined that I would be doing or that I would necessarily want to be doing, but um, I, I've really come to enjoy it. And um, I don't, I don't, you know, I have no regrets at all. I'm so much um, happier that I'm doing this than um, taking some kind of medication with side effects or unknown long-term um, complications. So um, it's, it really um, has been, um, one of my uh, friends was uh, Jenny uh, was saying it's just transformative, but you know, it's, it's really um, changed a lot about how I think about um, what I can do and um, what to expect. I guess I'd say one more thing. Um, when you're a master's three person, you, there are certain things um, in your body that have started to change and you think, well, you know, I'll never um, be able to do that like I once did. And so to have at, at this age something um, kind of markedly improving and getting better is like psychologically, it's, it's really a very nice place to be rather than saying, you know, you know, another year passed and I'm a little less able to do this or that, you know, but um, to feel that um, getting stronger and um, um, being able to um, have better um, balance and all is just, it's, it's, it's really very, um, very good place to be. All right. So we'll hang around for a couple of minutes. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. So there are a couple of questions already being asked earlier on uh, when, when Pat was talking. So the first one was uh, by Raj. Raj was, uh, remember Raj, Pat? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he asked, why do you think it's so hard to convince people to take up strength training? I, I, I guess um, I never thought that I like if my GP had said, you know, you're going to go to a barbell gym. I, you know, the, uh, there's um, the, the kind of public uh, general public's idea of that they've got like strength training mixed up with um, maybe Olympic weightlifting and bodybuilding and they're, they're just all kind of, you know, run together. And I um, didn't imagine that, that there would be a place for um, someone my age in a gym with barbells. I just, you know, I just didn't think I would belong there. Even I told Sean, even if I had walked by your place, I wouldn't think, oh yeah, maybe, maybe I should um, try training there. I just, I wouldn't um, have thought that at all. And I think not ever having done it like in high school or something like that, it was something just um, way beyond. So as speaking as a female and my age, I just thought um, this is not something that I would be doing at all. So I've talked to some women friends about it. Some are, um, uh, worried about, uh, but I can't because of my back issue or, you know, that, you know, they have, um, something like that. Um, others, uh, uh, one or two have tried it and, um, one loves it. And uh, another one was like, Nope, it's not for me. So, um, I, I will say it takes, it takes some, 
thing of staying with it because after the weights start to get heavy, you gotta, you gotta like get your mind in a place about, yep, I'm doing this and um, this is, this is good for me. It's helping me. These are heavy, but they'll be successful. Hang in there, you know, keep going with it. Um, uh, um, um, so consistency and, and, and sticking with it are important. And maybe, maybe that's also not for everybody. You know, just, yep. it's just too hard to contemplate. Yeah. Yeah. For, for the, the, the general population's idea of exercise is that, you know, if, if the, the moment you do it, you've got to perspire profusely. You've got to start breathing hard. You've got to feel absolutely naked at the end of the workout. And if you don't feel, and if you don't feel that at the end of it, it doesn't feel like the, the session itself was productive. Um, but in, in strength training, you can't start off that way because you've not built up your strength foundation. So yeah. that takes a while to build up. And some people feel that they're not doing much or they feel that they're not exercising or, or it's not effective because they are not you know, feeling that way as they think that they should at the end of the workout. And then yeah. they, they, they fall out saying, no, this, is, this is too easy. And, but we have yep. to pay the cost because if you've never done a lift before, you can't be loaded with a heavy enough weight to make you feel that way because then you run the risk of getting hurt and all sorts of stuff. So that, that could be one thing as well. Yeah, um, because at the, at the beginning, it's like, oh, it's so easy. Uh, what, what value is there in yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. now yeah. I see yeah. how critically important it is to um, get the technique correct. Yes, yes. So ma many times we have uh, clients coming in, in the first few sessions, they're like, oh, that's, that's it. Okay, can you put more weight? Or oh, I don't have to rest so much and it, it's too easy. And, but then, and, you know, in, in like two, three months time, and they'll tell me, can I have another minute of rest? Right, 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 right. <laughs> happens all the time. So right, right, right. that could be one reason why people are not so much into it. Um, it's it's also tough when it gets heavy. Yes. And uh, it's it's quite repetitive. So you're doing the same things. You're adding a little bit of weight, programming, changing a little bit, but by and large, it's pretty much the same thing. And for people that like to do a whole bunch of stuff and run around in variety, this might not work for them as well. So uh, this this is not for everyone. Um, can it help everyone? For sure. But not everyone would probably find it interesting enough to stick with it. I uh, like it that um, it is the same thing because um, I don't have to like learn anything new. You know, it's, it's what I know I'm going to be doing. And it, but it requires so much focus. So my mind is cleared of everything else. And, you know, I'm just thinking about these um, these few things and focusing on a couple couple things and that is appealing to me that, you know cool so uh, juicy was asked was saying um, can you talk a bit about the safety of doing weightlifting some of her friends told her to be careful as it might hurt her back but she know that she knows that if it's done properly there is there is uh, there is no risk well uh, this that's what she said but I want to add that that there's not no risk it's low but everything you do there's risk um, just, just want to get it out there. So she's saying, can, can you cover a little bit about this? So, so, well, I want to say that um, I've never gotten injured lifting weights, <laughs> but I've gotten injured like tripping on, uh, you know, I, you know, I've, I've, you know, bumped my knee, you know, when I was going to do something or something like that. But, you know, um, because, we take great pains to make sure that technique is correct and everything is properly loaded and done. There's, I feel very safe um, in the gym and um, I, I just, I haven't, I, I, I don't have any um, injuries from lifting weights. The, it took me a long time to understand about um, my back with uh, like deadlifting, for example. And I finally understood that by um, taking the um, deadlift position, holding everything tight and firm, that my um, spine is not 
moving or flexing or changing the muscles are holding it there while I'm doing while I'm performing the lift and because we started at some extremely manageable deadlift weight and slowly 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 um, worked up that it it was a very safe um, the, the whole uh, process was very safe for me if if I had um, done it myself if I had just been thinking oh, I'll um, try the deadlift to um, get stronger I would have tried to load the bar with something that started to feel a little heavy you know and I would have tried to lift from that and I wouldn't have um, good form and I wouldn't know how to brace and hold everything tight before I started the lift and um, I think um, it, one, one could get injured that way but by this um, very slow, um, gradual progression and constant attention to form, to making sure that the form is correct and not jumping ahead, the temptation to see, oh, can I pull this yet? Can I pull this yet? You know, let me try this. I'll just, you know, do, we, we never do that. <laughs> you know, we're just like, ever, ever. and if I ever, no, no, no. But I would, if left to my own devices, I would, I want to check, just see, you know, you know. And maybe I would just even just tug on it, you know, and everything that, that's like not, not good form. Um, so um, I, I think it's, um, I feel that it's, it's um, very, I've come to understand that it's very safe if done um, properly. Yep, yep. So while, while there's nothing that is absolutely no risk, we can minimize the risk by concentrating on doing the list properly and also making sure that the program is appropriate on um, the loading and everything is fine. So if you follow D2 principles, you can minimize your risk. So that's, that's the best that you can do. Do, do people still get injured once in a while? Yeah, I mean, it happens, but it's not something that's deliberating or it's a lifelong injury. You know, some people get, you know, get like a, they tweak their backs or, they need to feel funky, but that can be easily resolved with a bit of rehab. It goes away, you know, sometimes in a couple of days it goes away, sometimes in a couple of weeks. But even though when people get hurt, it is nothing serious. So that's that's not too bad. Um, she, Juicy was also saying that she, she found it remarkable that the bone density value, which have decreased uh, over the years, managed to go back up in a year by by just doing weight training, even dropping the the the, the drugs that you were taking. So she was asking, can can you do you mind sharing the the exact DEXA scan values that you had throughout all the years? Oh, through the through the years. Yeah. So I'm 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 not sure how long she's asking for, but uh, maybe that 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 sh to show the trend and to to have the values of it decreasing over the years before it increased uh, in 2018. Okay. I, I don't think I've got that in a form that I can, um, well, I can see here. I don't have 20 years of data in like a table right now. And <clears throat> I have the um, most recent bone mineral density of the lumbar spine and there's T scores and bone mineral densities. And so the, the most recent, which is the one that had increased by 0.75, the BMD of the lumbar vertebrae is 0 0.806 grams per um, square centimeter, centimeter squared. And the T score was minus 2.2. This is in the osteopenic range. Mm -hmm. And previously it had been um, in the osteoporosis range. Let me see if I can just find a one right before that. So what, okay. what, what, what I, I found it? Yep, the, boat, the BMD, the BMD for the 2017 was 0.75. This is for the lumbar spine. 
and the T-score was minus 2.7, and this was osteoporosis. Fracture risk high. So this was the, the value that pushed you over the edge to do something different. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing. So there's uh, one last question that Elizabeth asked is that uh, why was the training that Pat was doing before she started barbell training not have the same health impact that she's seen since? Uh, like, so what, what Pat was doing before was on machines, uh, high repetitions. What, what was the repetition range that you were doing at that point of time? You know, like two sets of 10, right. you know, maybe three sets of 10, something like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So bone. And there's no, no progression. You know, I might, I might get something, some weight and, you know, might stay with that for months because the, the increments on the machines were kind of large for me. Yeah. So it would take a long time before I could jump up to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So bone and muscle both react to stress that you apply on it. If you do not ask it to do something, it will not progress. So if you don't ask of a muscle to do something that more that is adapted to, it will not progress beyond what is currently adapted to. So every, you have to have progress as you're training. Um, Pat was just saying that she maintained the same weight as, as you know, for, for a couple of months. But when we train, we don't do that. Even though the increase is very slight from workout to workout, we always want to go in an uptrend because we want to ask the bone to lay more bone mineral and to ask the muscles to build more muscle tissue. And to do that, we need to stress it. And we stress it by loading it more than what it was adapted to. So that's one thing. Um, if you don't have progressive overload, it, nothing's much going to happen. You're just going to stay at where you are. Um, so some, sometimes I, I get clients asking me when, when say, you know, an arbitrary number, they're deadlifting 60 kilos. And then they tell me, can I just stay at 60 kilos and keep lifting this weight till 60 kilos feels easier? So if you keep doing 60 kilos, you will not progress beyond that. And 60 kilos will always feel heavy. However, if you bring up the strength to be able to lift, to lift 80 kilos, 60 kilos will feel light. So you, you always have to keep going up. Um, the, next, the next point is that the, the stuff that Pat was doing, it's all uh, mostly single joint stuff, like leg extensions that only works the knee joints, or uh, no, leg curls that also only works around one, one joint. The, the stuff that we do at the gym is it works the whole body as a system. So say an example for a squat, everything be, between where the bar is, which is up, high which is up on her back and the floor everything between that is being stressed so it's either stabilizing you or moving the load everything in between gets strong and the, the most important components of the exoskeleton so like the, the lower back and the, and the hips they all get strengthened as well whereas if something like a, a leg extension the back doesn't uh, receive any form of compressive loading so it will not adapt um, so that, that's why that's the main difference between why what Pat was doing before and what she's doing now is, is that that's the difference. So no progressive overload and not the loading the whole body as a system. All right. Is there anyone else? I think that is all the questions that we have. All right. So thank you, Pat, for your time. Of course. Yes, uh, yes. Nice to catch up with you again and uh, hope to see you in the very, very near future. Yes, very, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, forward yes, to it. yes, yes, so, okay. so, so are we. All right, to everyone watching, thank you for watching and uh, stay safe. See ya. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. All right, so one second. Ended the life. All right, cool. I just ended the live video. All right, thank you. How 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 do you find that? How how did it go? It was okay.
I, I think, um, um, you know, when I have to interview people, but when you ask them to talk about stuff that's close to them, you know, it's the, um, it's the it's easiest, the, right? It's the yeah, easiest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy when, when it's something that you're you're very familiar with. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to say I um I didn't put in a plug for um the barbell prescription book, but I did read that at the beginning. Ah. And I didn't and then I came back and I read it again. So that was that is, um that is fine. That is fine. Okay. So um after this is done, it will be you